Welcome back to one of many automotive maintenance and service Motor Age tech tips brought to you by BPRO Auto. Next level aftermarket parts that are approved by Mopar and built to fit most makes and models. Now today we're talking about port fuel injectors and I'm excited to share a few service tips that I feel will be extremely helpful when dealing with fuel injected related drivability problems. Now did you know that the mean time between failure for a port fuel injector manufactured in the late 2000s typically ranges from 100,000 to 150,000 miles? And for port fuel injectors manufactured in the late 2020s, Manufacturing and material advancements have improved durability and reliability well beyond those numbers. However, these numbers are highly dependent on various factors, which includes maintenance on the positive crankcase ventilation system, intake manifold service, fuel filter service, periodic fuel injector cleaning, and the quality of fuel used. For the typical use case in passenger vehicles, after 150,000 miles, the fuel injectors have easily surpassed 180 million cycles. Now, why am I highlighting this? Well, over the years, I have serviced and tested thousands of fuel injectors, and I have been able to witness injector variability affecting engine performance. Now, usually, my specialized bench testing of injectors is utilized to verify my diagnosis. And although this machine has a sophisticated ultrasonic cleaning process, I usually recommend replacement of the injectors in sets with new rather than cleaning. Now don't get me wrong, regular maintenance of the injectors, which includes periodic cleaning either on or off the car, can indeed help keep fuel injectors performing optimally. But after 150 million cycles, the injectors have typically reached their useful life, in my humble opinion. And when it comes to replacement, quality matters. As I mentioned earlier, I have observed numerous anomalies with injectors, and this hasn't been limited to aged injectors alone. Now, I've seen vehicles with new replacement injectors resulting in drivability complaints, which led to confusion when trying to solve these vehicle issues. The behavior I have observed has involved the technician never second-guessing the performance characteristics of the injectors simply because they were new. Flow testing injectors dynamically over various frequencies of engine speed and pulse widths is usually where these faults occur. Now it is impossible to produce an injector with near perfect linearity, but the higher quality injectors I've seen over the years satisfy vehicle performance demands nicely where others have fallen short. B-Pro Auto fuel injectors are OE backed, high quality replacements, and in fact, I've tested their injectors here across a stringent routine of frequencies and pressures and found that they perform at the levels I would expect for replacements, even on my own vehicles. B-Pro Auto fuel injectors also come with an extensive two-year unlimited mile warranty, which is absolutely outstanding. So when it comes to diagnostics, here's a couple things that I like to do. I like to hook up my oscilloscope and take a look at the injectors, especially if they're a sequential injection system. So first thing we need to do is go into the wiring diagram and look for a good test point. And here on this vehicle, if we trace the uh, routing of the injector powering mechanisms, we can see that they're isolated in two different banks. But then if we go to the fuse box over here, we can see that it's protected by one fuse. The location of that fuse is in the integrated uh, underhood power module here. And so we can pull out that fuse. It is a, uh, let's see, it's a 10 amp fuse. So we're gonna hook up a, uh, put in its place a fuse loop and then put the fuse uh, in its little holder here. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and connect our current probe here. And we're using, uh, we're on the one millivolt per 10, it is 10 milliamps. Okay, so we're gonna hook that up there. We normally would like to hook up to the number one fuel injector, but in this case, the number one fuel injector is underneath the intake manifold. So the next easiest one to get to is cylinder number two, which is up in the front here. So we'll plug into that. Then we need to go to our service information and find out what is the firing order on this engine and how is the layout. So we can see here the firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six. We're back probing into uh, control side of number two injector so we can just sequence off of that. Now when it comes to the scope here, 
what we're going to do is configure our channels. So one, we're going to put it at 100 volts, um, 100 volt scaling, okay? And then B, we're going to put at um, a two amp scaling, okay? And then on our sweep rate, we'll go ahead and set that to uh, 20 milliseconds per division, okay? And then the last thing we want to do is set up a trigger. So we'll click on trigger. We want to tr trigger off of A on a falling edge. And we'll call, well, maybe we'll just put in 5 volts, okay? Click OK. So we're looking for that to come down. And then I like to take this uh, trigger and move it over here to the left. And the time division here, um, that'll depend on whether we can get a complete engine rev on the, on the screen. So let's go ahead and start up the vehicle and we'll hit run on our scope. And there we've got, I think I need to put a little more time on here. We'll go to 50 milliseconds. There we can see, actually we can see multiple. So let's go back to 20 milliseconds per division. So we have one complete engine cycle and we can see our injectors. Let's snap the throttle a couple of times. Now we'll go ahead and stop the scope and take a look here. So you can notice right away that there is a problem here and I've simply placed a bug in the circuit. So let's take a look. So if we come into our injector voltage signal, we can see it on channel one and I'll pull this down and you can see, I'm gonna grab this cursor here. You can see that we're hitting 79 volts. So 80 volts is what our likely what the Zener diode is set up in the in the PCM. Okay. So we can look here. This is number two. So this first one here is two, and then three, and then four has a problem. And you can see right here, I've actually stuck a, a five or 50 ohm resistor in place of the fuel injector on this vehicle, just to show you that, uh, you know, we can see that. And then um, the other thing I like to look at here is let's click on our channel B and we're gonna move our cursors up. And the one thing I like to look at is the pintle hump. And I'm gonna just zoom in here. So as we zoom in, you see that little hump? Up like right here and here. I'm gonna call it probably right there. We have a panel hump there, and then if we look look down here on the green or on the red trace, we have an additional pintle hump. Let's move that scale. Another pintle hump. So those are the points at where the injector actually fully opens here on the left, and then over here on the right where the injector was commanded off, we have a little bit of time where the injector did not, it, it takes a little bit of time for it to close. So it's commanded off right there. And where it falls through that little pintle hump, that amount of time, which is 0.52 milliseconds, okay? You can see that 0.52 milliseconds is the time it took to, um, to go closed. If we come over here and look at where it opened, from the time that it was commanded on, it took 1.25 milliseconds for it to actually fully open, okay? Now, with that horizontal cursor over here on the right, um, let's see here. We can drop that cursor right there. Now we can kind of look at all the others and look for any anomalies. That one actually has a more defined, that one actually looks really good. You can see our problem cylinder there. You can look at this one. It actually looks pretty good. Our number two, that one actually has a little bit of an issue there. So if this vehicle had drivability-related problems and I was going to go after injector uh, service 
Um, I'd want to recheck that after uh, rep repair. Likely would need a new set of injectors. And then we can go back and look at, uh, look at some of the others here. So we look at that pinnel hump. That one looks good. This pinnel hump is a little bit later. And a little later, okay. And there's our repeat. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and take out my, my little bug. I'm gonna plug this back in. We'll start it back up. And looks like I lost my, my voltage trace. There we go. Go ahead and stop the scope. And you can see that my pattern now is back to normal. When removing fuel injectors for service, be sure to follow the manufacturer's steps for removal. After removing the injector from the fuel rail, I recommend looking closely at the inlet side of the fuel rail for any signs of rust or debris. And if you have rust or debris, then a thorough cleaning of the fuel supply system is required or you'll end up with repeat failures. If you're installing replacement injectors, then of course you'll want to clear DTCs and reset fuel trims and any other relearns that may be required. Then you'll want to take the vehicle out on an extended road test while recording a basic set of engine parameters, which includes long-term, short-term fuel trims, RPM, speed, and others. Reviewing the long and short-term fuel trim values during hot idle and park in neutral, light load at less than 2,500 RPM, and slightly heavier loads at 3,000 and above, looking for average values inside of plus or minus 10% long-term fuel trim is good in my book. Well, this is all we have for now, and until next time. I hope you found this video informative, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and thanks for watching.